Hey everybody, my name is Mike Hagen. I want to talk to you today about the Spider Lens Cal. Now this is a Data Color product and just recently Data Color has produced a new kit. It's called the Spider X Capture Pro Kit. This kit comes with four independent products. One of them is this right here. It's called the Spider X Lens Cal. And then we've got the Spider Color Checker, C-H-E-C-K-R, the checker. Then we've got the Spider Cube. And then of course we have the Spider X Elite, which is the screen calibration tool. For this video though, I wanna show you how we use the Lens Cal. The purpose of the lens cal is to calibrate the autofocus system on your camera and pair that calibration with your lens. Every lens that you buy has a slightly different interaction with your camera's autofocus system, all right? And this tool allows us to check critical autofocus. I'm gonna walk you through that process right now and show you how it all works together. I also wanna point out that this process works slightly different if you're using a mirrorless camera versus a DSLR camera. I've got a DSLR mounted right now, it's the Nikon D850. I'll also go through that process again in a few minutes with the Nikon Z6 camera, which would also work the same as if you had maybe an Olympus or a Fuji or something else. Most of the cameras work very similar when it comes to this lens cal tool. Let's start off with the tool itself. When it ships from the factory, uh, it ships flat here, so you're going to pull it out of that metal container that I just showed in a, a second ago, like this. You then flip it up, and then you put it around the zero mark, and you snap it in place, at which point it all settles in so that the zero mark on the measurement strip matches with the focus target there in the background. Now here in the front, we also have what's called a spirit bubble. That spirit bubble you're going to want to use to make sure that this is mounted absolutely level. On the bottom here, there's a quarter inch by 20 thread, and I've basically just mounted an Arca Swiss plate that will mount to a ball head here. I'm using a ball head on the mount just so that I have full control over the leveling. And as you can see here, I can take that ball head and then I can move it around until that spirit level is leveled. So I'm gonna do that right now, put it right in the middle. That looks good. Okay, next, I'll position this away from the camera. I'll talk about that distance then right now. Every member I meant, remember I mentioned a minute ago that every lens that you use has a slightly different interaction with your autofocus sensor. So uh, in order to calibrate your lens, you'll need to figure out what distance the focus target should be away from the camera. Data color recommends anywhere from 25 to 50 times your focal length. So I have the Nikon 105 millimeter macro lens on here right now. So if I take 105 millimeters and multiply that by 25, I get about 2,600 millimeters or so. Convert that to feet, that's about 8.6 feet on the close side. So basically anywhere from about 8.6 feet to 17 feet is the distance that this lens cal should be positioned from the camera. All right, so I've got it a little bit closer here because we're on set, but I still think you'll get the idea. Um, normally I would set it up for about eight or nine feet away and call that good. All right, now I'm gonna go set up the camera and show you how this all works. With the DSLR, what we're most interested in is the, the interaction between the autofocus sensors and the final image, right? So remember on a DSLR, there's a mirror, of course, and that mirror, when it's in the down position, it allows light to go through that mirror, and then some of the light goes down to the bottom, which, which is where the autofocus sensors are. Now on a mirrorless camera, like the Nikon Z6 and Z7, there is no mirror in the way, so the camera is always focusing right on the sensor. Back to the DSLR, like a D850, D750, D500, um, Sometimes the sensor, the autofocus sensor, that calibration is off from the imaging sensor. And that's why we go through this process here. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go into the menu system and we want to set up the lens calibration options inside of the menu system, all right? So I'm going to go over here to, in the, in the Nikon world, it's in the setup menu, and I'm going to scroll down until we get to something called AF fine tune or autofocus fine tune. I go in there and I turn AF fine tune on. And then I go into saved value, at which point I then can start adjusting my autofocus fine tuning. 
Now starting out, it might be wise to start at zero, right? AF fine tuning, zero adjustment. And I will do that for this photo. So I'm just, this is basically right from the factory. I push okay. I've got no fine tune adjustment. And I'm just gonna take a picture of my calibration or my lens cal over there just to see if I'm close or not close. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna, I'm going to look through my viewfinder and actually now that I'm looking through my viewfinder, I notice that my lens cal target is not perpendicular to my camera. So I'm gonna go adjust it until it is perpendicular with the camera. This is important, right? Because if it's not perpendicular with the camera, then the focus, the ramp here will be closer to the camera or farther away from the camera than the target itself. Yep, I've got it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look through the viewfinder. Remember, DC, DSLR, I wanna make sure it's the autofocus sensors down below that are accurate. So I focus and then I let up. And by the way, you generally want your aperture to be wide open. So like an F2.8 lens, you're gonna to wanna to shoot wide open at F2.8. That will allow a minimum amount of depth of field so you can determine if that focus ramp uh, is blurry or sharp. All right, so we're focused now. I'm now going to push my shutter release button. And by the way, I've got it on a two second timer delay so my hands are off of it. Ideally, you would also use your mirror lockup function so that you don't induce any vibration in the system. All right, it's taking the photo. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go review that photo on the back of the camera. I'm going to zoom in nice and tight. So I'm gonna zoom in to 100% and I will then scroll up and down in my zoom and I'm looking for uh, zero, the zero mark to be in focus. So here you can see I'm at the minus six down, by there, down there and it's blurry. I scroll up and we see zero. Zero looks to be in very sharp focus. And then I scroll up here to six and that looks to be out of focus. Now, if I look very, very carefully here, uh, it actually looks like the one on top is slightly more in focus than the zero. So what that indicates to me is that the camera is back focusing. In other words, it's focusing behind the subject. Let's assume that's the case. If it is the case, then I'm going to go back to my menu system and go back into AF fine tune. And now we'll go to my saved value function and I want to go minus. I don't know exactly how far to go. I'm just gonna make a little guess here. I'm gonna go minus five. I'll push okay and then back out of that. Now I'll go back to my viewfinder. I will focus again and I'm just gonna fine tune my camera so that it, the focus sensor is right in the middle of that target. There we go. So focus, let go, and now I'll take my picture. Now that it's taken, I'll go and play it back. Zoom in again, just like I did before. And now that I look at it, that zero looks to be in pretty sharp focus. The one below is starting to get a little blurry. The one up top still looks kind of sharp. So I'm actually gonna go a little bit more on the negative side, maybe down to a minus six or a minus seven. I'll do that again. Go back into saved value. Let's go to minus seven. I'll hit return. Now, every time you do this, you need to refocus. In fact, sometimes I even defocus, make it blurry, and then refocus. And now we take the picture. We hit play, zoom in again to 100%. Now we zoom in, looking at that. And it looks like minus seven was too much. So I'll go back to minus six. You see how that this is an iter iterative process, right? Take a picture, make an adjustment. Take a picture, make an adjustment. Sometimes looking at those photos here on the back of your camera uh, gets a little tedious. So I know some photographers who do this, they actually do it by tethering to their computer system. And that way you can see it on a nice big monitor, a big screen. Okay, I've got minus six programmed in there. One final defocus and refocus. 
There we go. Take a picture and this should be good. Great. Now I'll zoom in for the, my final check. Yeah. Nailed it. Just nailed it. So this specific camera and this specific lens requires a minus six for this specific distance, right? Now keep in mind that this calibration process, um, it actually is different depending on if your lens is focusing at infinity versus focusing at 50 feet versus 25 feet versus 10 feet. Um, what I recommend you doing is thinking through how you're using that lens. So for example, this lens here is a 105 macro. What am I doing with it? I'm usually doing macro photography of flowers or I'm using it for portraiture. Therefore, I might want to calibrate it at a distance that's appropriate to my most predominant use. On the other hand, maybe I've got a, let's say a really long lens, like a 500 millimeter lens. Maybe I'm doing more bird photography and those birds are out at, you know, 100 feet to 500 feet away. Well, maybe I want to calibrate it then for that distance because that's where I'm most predominantly using that setup. Just something to keep in mind. Well, let me show you now how we use this tool in the mirrorless camera. Now I've got the Nikon Z6 on there. And by the way, this process is going to work the same for the Z6, the Z7, as well as for the Sony's and the Olympuses and the Fuji's and all the other mirrorless cameras. I want to point out though, again, the technological difference between a DSLR and a mirrorless. With a mirrorless camera, our focus sensors are literally on the sensor itself. In other words, the imaging sensor. Therefore, what you focus on is what you see in real time. And I know that sounds a little bit obvious, but it's a major distinction between what a mirrorless camera sees in the focus mode and what a DSLR sees in the focus mode. See, again, the DSLR doesn't actually see anything. The light goes down to a separate sensor array down below in the base of the camera. Okay, that said, you very rarely find focus calibration issues on mirrorless cameras because even if the lens is out of calibration, it's gonna keep focusing on the imaging sensor until it's in focus. That's just the way it works. That said, we still have the technology in this camera to do the focus calibration, so let's do that right now. I've got a Nikon 24-70 f4. This is the Z series uh, lens. It's actually the Nikkor S series. and. I'm zoomed at 70 millimeters, so we use that distance uh, calculation again. 70 times 25 millimeters is about five and a half feet, maybe six feet, something like that. And this lens calibration tool is about five and a half feet away, so I'm set up perfectly for that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to focus on my target. And in this case, I don't have to look through the viewfinder because the viewfinder is exactly the same thing as I see on the screen in the back, right? It's a mirrorless camera. So again, focus, I've got it set, I'll set it for self timer here. Let's go set it for self timer. There we go, a two second delay. And now we take that picture. Go to playback or review. I'm gonna zoom in to 100% and look at my focus. You can see the zero there looks to be in pretty good focus overall. If I zoom up or if I uh, scroll up towards the end of the focus scale, that six is starting to get blurry. And then if I go down here to the minus six, it also is blurry. So it looks like out of the box that my Nikon Z6 is actually set up properly. I have got no uh, calibration to do. Just for, for fun, let's go in there to the AF fine tune menu item and we'll go into the saved value for this lens and sure enough, I'm at zero. So the process works the same though. If what I'm focusing on gives me a slightly different result from what the actual image results in, then I would go in here and adjust it forward or backward depending on what that lens cal tool told me to do. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful to you. Now you know how to use the lens cal. I think it is a great product, especially for DSLR shooters. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And finally, if you wanna be notified when we have new videos, go ahead and click that bell button down below and that will notify you just about once a week that we have a new video. So thanks for watching, have a great day and keep on shooting.